Uh, my name's Martin Davis, and I'm the managing director of Davis and Bell Limited. Um, we're a, a microelectronic assembly consultancy business based just up the road here at the Epic Building. Um, we, our background is very much um, microelectronics, photonics, high power LEDs, uh, automotive electronics, and uh, we've been working in this industry for about 24 years now. Um, I first visited Tor Bay back in, in the year 2000. Um, there was a massive photonics company on this actual site called Nortel Networks. And my first assignment for Palomar Technologies was to install 20 of these machines that we have behind us. It's, um, so they're, they're uh, high accuracy dye bonders and wire bonders. And um, I think it was about a $10 million investment by Nortel at the time. Uh, which was uh, hit, made all the headlines, and it changed the way Nortel built these optoelectronic components from a manual type assembly process to a fully automated process, and that was really driven by the demand of the uh, the, the internet boom uh, at, the, at the turn of the century. If you look around you at any um, consumable electronic device, uh, you know your smartphones, your, your watches, your laptops, your desktops. Pretty much everything inside your, your car, all, all that, uh, all those electronics and white goods in, in, in your home. Um, if you strip them down, you, you would find that there would be microelectronic assembly at the heart of them. Yeah, so all those chips start life in these semiconductor wafer fab um, massive facilities around the world. Um, and these, these wafer fabs produce the, the chips on a wafer, and the wafer is tested and singulated into dye. And then those dyes need dye bonding onto a substrate, onto a PCB, um, and all those I.O., those input-output connections, all, the, all those communications, they need um, bonding between um, the top of the chip and the substrate itself. So, um, so microelectronic assembly, the back-end processing part of that is, is dye bonding the chip onto a substrate and wire bonding the interconnect from the top of the chip to the substrate to get the communication to the, the outside electronics. Um, so everything pretty much electronic orientated needs dye bonding and wire bonding. Um, so so the, the industry is huge, it's so diverse, um, it encompasses uh, silicon photonics, um, uh, microelectronics, uh, automotive, medical devices, you know, pacemakers, implantables, um, aerospace, you know, all, the, all our air transport, all our rail and road transport. So, uh, Microelectronic um, bonding, uh, it, it's a huge industry uh, and very diverse. And, and, and when you learn those initial skills of dye bonding and wire bonding, uh, it can be used in all these different industries. So uh, these are skills that um, you'll, you'll never be out of work if you learn these skills, put it that way. Having our business up the road at Epic, um, we're part of the Torbay High Tech Cluster. And South Devon College are also part of that cluster. Um, feed in, in um, you, know, uh, you know, relevant course information, um, understanding the requirements of, of the local businesses and, and, and trying, to, um, trying to get some balance there to, to provide uh, you know, the correct qualifications for people moving into these businesses. And we have a, uh, it's pretty much a bi-monthly uh, meeting. We, we all get in the boardroom at Epic or you know, through the COVID times, it was a, a, a virtual event online. We all give a business update, and um, one thing that became apparent very quickly was there was a massive skill uh, gap in the skills market. Um, these big multinational global companies like Lamentum that we have here in Paynton, 26, Gucci and Houseco, Effect Photonics, Bay, Plessy, Spirant, um, they're all looking to hire uh, qualified microelectronic assembly engineers, photonic design engineers. Um, we just don't. We just don't have the people. Um, you know, the legacy of Nortel is a lot of the people that work at Nortel are at that kind of retirement age, and we've got this gap to fill. Um, so, working with Steve and Lawrence and Roger here at the college, we decided to put together some um, photonic course content, working with working with the high tech cluster companies like Lamentum and Two Six. Everyone put, uh, give give an input as to that the module content, the kind of skills they wanted to, to be covered in these courses. And um, the first thing uh, we heard about it was there was a, a photonics boot camp course that was run in May uh, 2021. And uh, myself and my business partner were invited to, to join the course. 
uh, and it was amazing. Um, we had uh, associate lecturers like Phil Mitchell, Mark Kenny, uh, Adrian Boatwright. Um, we were upstairs in, in, in the Digital Skills Centre here in the ABB uh, boardroom and uh, we learned all about the, um, the theory of lasers, uh, um, you know, the, the history of, of photonic packaging um, and, and it was an amazing course. And at the end of the course, we all gave, gave some feedback and, and loved it. We loved the theory side. Um, but myself being a, a, an apprentice, uh, I was a mechanical engineer and apprentice back in the day, I liked that balance of some hands-on experience to go with the theory. Because I think especially for youngsters, you can sit in the classroom and absorb all the slides or, or, or the, the, the theoretical information, but sometimes you can't see how that's applied in real life. So um, we set about um, coming up with an idea for a practical skills room um, and uh, that's where we are today now. So we, we've, we've identified some equipment, some materials and some course content. So um, to date that, that, that's been my involvement with, with, with the, uh, the college. And because of that, um, they, they've asked me to be an associate lecturer to come in and, and show students, apprentices and, and, and people maybe cross training from different industries. Um, how to use the equipment, how to set up these processes um, and, and to actually develop the courses in, in this room. The high-tech cluster businesses, if, if you were to visit them and look around their labs, you'd see all this kind of equipment behind me. Um, so, you know, from their point of view, when they're, um, when they're looking for, uh, if they put a job out in the job market, um, they look, ideally they like someone with a bit of experience, um, someone that might have had a bit of hands-on time on, on, on these kinds of uh, pieces of equipment and processes. And um, it, is, it is a technical skill. And um, you know, when you first join a company, you, you'll have your induction, and then you'll have some training on the, these bits of equipment. And it can take weeks to learn just how to simply thread a wire bonder. You know, th this wire bonder behind me uh, is running 17.5 micron gold wire. So to put that into perspective, uh, a human hair is 33 microns. So we're pretty much half the diameter of a human hair. It's a real gold wire, there's a wire path, and you have to use tweezers, uh, microscopes, and, and you have to thread the capillary. Like, it's a bit like a sewing machine. So to, to get those kind of dexterous um, hand-eye coordination skills, um, to do that ahead of you know, entering a company, to say, oh yeah, I've used this kind of bonding equipment, I'm familiar with threading a wire bonder, I'm familiar with train up components for a die bonder. Um, that'll really impress the, you know, your potential new employer and uh, really allow you to hit the, hit the ground running. Um, so the, you know, what we've done, we've cherry picked the equipment um, that uh, all these, all these high-tech cluster companies um, uh, are familiar with, that, that they have in their own facilities. We've duplicated them. Um, so that um, apprentices and, and students and trainees can, can get hands-on. Um, get familiar with the terminology as well. Die bonding and wire bonding, flip chip, UV curing, um, mill standard, destruct testing. Just get familiar with the lingo, understand the processes. And um, you know, to facilitate that, we're, we're going to come up with a, a number of courses. It's going to be short courses. Um, uh, that can be joined together to, to, to go towards you know, the, the, uh, the degree level uh, indentured apprenticeship. Um, but it'll start as short courses initially. And um, these short courses, for, for a young student, I, I remember when I was uh, in college, you don't really know what you want to do at that age. So to have some exposure to the equipment and processes, materials, and think, well, yeah, I, you know, I, I've, got, I've got a natural talent for this, I find it interesting, or it might be, it's not for me, you know, it's, it, it's not for everyone. Um, so th these short courses will be um, based on dye bonding, uh, the different types, eutectic, epoxy, and UV bonding, flip chip as well. Uh, and then wire bonding, the difference between ball bonding and wedge bonding, ribbon bonding, um, when to use each type of process. And then um, some of the other associate lecturers here with um, some other skill sets will take the students through uh, alignment, actually powering up these laser devices and sending some signals down some fibers, um, which is super interesting. There'll be some lid-in aspects. These packages uh, have to be hermetically sealed um, you know, for high rel environments. Uh, they go up in satellites, they go under the sea. Um, so, so there'll be some lid-in aspects and some tests as well. So um, we're trying to provide 
course content that will fulfill a number of job roles within these high-tech cluster companies. Um, so it'll expose the students to the type of industry to see if they like it. If they do like it, we've got everything here to make them a success. When people talk about growth, they, they talk about this CAGR, compound annual growth rate. And typically in industry, this is anywhere between 2 and 3% with, with our more you know, traditional industries. But uh, in terms of uh, silicon photonics and microelectronic packaging in general, um, the, these compound annual growth rates are forecast way higher than that kind of percentage. I think uh, it, you know, for the, the top level photonics industry, it's about 7%. That encompasses solar, high power LED, um, as well as kind of optical transceivers and, and, the, and, and the kind of um, products and industry that we're famous for here in Torbay. Um, but uh, in terms of silicon photonics, um, I think that cage is estimated at something like 40%. So um, what's pushing that, that growth rate? Well, it's um, you know, the drive for smart cities, autonomous vehicles, um, uh, renewable energy uh, and, and green efficient energy. Um, so, you know, if, if you think of um, autonomous vehicles, we, um, we, you know, we, we've all, well, most people have got some kind of cruise control uh, electronics in their car. Uh, the next step on is active cruise control. So, uh, traditionally, that's using radar. And when you're on the motorway, the, the radar will actively slow your car down or speed it up, depending on the gap to the car in front. But the new technology is, is LiDAR. So it's looking at like a 3D perspective of your car, and that's what you need for autonomous vehicles. So there's a lot of um, investment privately for, for LiDAR-type projects within the automotive sector. Um, you've got all the, the LiDAR for drone vehicles. Yeah, in terms of the optical transceiver type devices that, uh, that the local high-tech cluster companies uh, are typically involved in, um, we're, we're really pushing the, the boundaries of, of physics and, and, and science in general. You know, we're pushing Moore's law and what is possible. And uh, you know, everyone wants to enjoy high def uh, movie streaming uh, with no interruptions, no, no buffering. And uh, so we're seeing um, bit rates increase, you know, from 100G, which is typical at the moment, you know, up to 400G and even up to 1.6 terabits. Um, so so it, it's really exciting. There's so much R&D going into that. Um, the way we actually bond the parts together is going to have to change because of RF noise issues. Um, so, so it's a really in interesting time for the industry. Um, and these kind of optical transceiver um, design rules that they actually lead into quantum devices as well. So, so next generation quantum computing, quantum um, uh, encoding and quantum security. Um, so th there's so much future I in, in this industry. And um, you know, the, the college are actively involved in that and, and something that's happening later on this year in October, there's an IMAPS POP3 conference um, that one of the, the local uh, companies in the cluster has managed to um, persuade the, the organisers to move it from London to South Devon College to the Digital Skills Centre. So that's a real um, a banner in the air, you know, uh, to, to the whole of the UK and, and, and Europe in general that we're, we're, we're this strong, vibrant cluster with grassroots training roots um, and uh, it's a great opportunity to showcase what we do here in Torbay. And obviously when everyone visits, they're going to fall in love with the place and, and, and want to live here. So um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that's something great that's happening later on this year uh, at South Devon College. Um, so if I was to give some advice um, to any, any young person coming through the schooling system, through college, through university at the moment, um, you know, I'd say uh, you know, if you want to get into this kind of uh, industry, then yeah, stick with your sciences and your maths. Um, enjoy that. There's a, there's a British Science Week, uh, a week on Monday, sponsored by BT at the Dastral Park, where, where you can uh, log in and, and learn some content. Uh, you can learn about robotics. Uh, artificial intelligence, uh, all kinds of interesting stuff. So yeah, take a look at that. Um, in terms of the jobs, I've mentioned the high-tech cluster here that, that have got many job postings. They're looking for young talent. Uh, one way to get into that is through an apprenticeship. And um, South Devon College are developing a, a degree level apprenticeship in, in uh, engineering and, and a particular discipline of photonics. 
And what I would say is, um, at the moment, you, you might go off and, and do a degree, and you might come out of that degree programme with £60,000 worth of debt. If you go through the apprenticeship route, you'll earn money as you're learning. You, you won't have that debt, you'll have uh, practical skills, and, and, and the... Um, uh, and the, the, the classroom aspect, and um, I think it, it stands you in, in, in a better position um, to, to get employment at the end of your apprenticeship. Uh, it's the route I took back, back in the day, and I thoroughly recommend it. Um, I've, I've got kids myself, and I'll be pushing them down that route. Uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great way to learn uh, and get paid at the same time. Um, this industry, just, just to give you an idea, um, I'd say, uh, uh, you know, a degree level apprentice with a few years experience, you know, you can be looking at jobs with salaries over 50k a year. So it's a, a very high value industry, well paid, um, you know, uh, in terms of servicing, if you're a service engineer out servicing these machines, uh, companies are charging £200 an hour to fix these machines in the field. So uh, it's, it, it really is a, a high standard of industry, uh, well paid and um, the, the, the rewards are great and, and the opportunity to travel and see the world. Uh, I've, been, I've been most places in, during my time and um, I, I absolutely love it. And I think they say if, if you find a, a job you love, you never work another day in your life. So go for it.